week four of the Shore Conference high school football season. Kevin Williams and Bob Batters from the Shore Sports Network. And as part of the Atlantic Physical Therapy Center football picks, we take a look at some of the big games of what is an interesting weekend because games spread out over three days because of the Jewish holiday, which sort of makes for a little interesting weekend. Thursday night football to Saturday night football. Yeah, three uh, nights of football, so there's going to be a lot of action, a lot of stuff going on throughout those three days. So should be fun from that perspective. Bob, let's start with Thursday night. You have a, an interesting matchup, uh, Middletown South at Rumson. Rumson is number six in your Shore Sports Network top ten. These are two of the premier programs in the Shore without a question. Uh, how do you see this one? It should be a good one at Borden Stadium uh, on Thursday. I'll be there for that one. In Rumson, you have a, a program that is looking for its fifth straight sectional title, uh, which obviously they'll try to get later on this season. But right now the Bulldogs 2-0. They're coming off a, a win over Homedale, 40-24 on Saturday. Middletown South has been a team that, since that season opening loss to Red Bank Catholic, and they lose 47-10, okay, what, what's Middletown South? They come back with a win against over, over Ocean the following week, and then last week a hard-fought 10-7 victory over Manasquan in a really good game. Manasquan 1-2, but they'll be a good team this year. An emotional game, too, because you had Tommy Antonucci, the quarterback for Manasquan, going against his father, Steve Anthony, the head coach of Middletown South. So there's a lot going on in that game. But what really stood out to me was the Eagles' defense. Anytime you only give them seven points in a game, you're doing something right. And the return of Matt Tardy, the junior outside linebacker, to play opposite of Jay Crellin was huge for the Eagles' defense. And Crellin really went off, had a big game, 11 tackles, I think, three tackles for a loss, forced fumble. So it looked like a classic Middletown South defensive performance. The offense, still a work in progress, but you can see some flashes there. Um, and then Rumson, you know, they have some a really good running back in Peter Lucas. He's got about 500 yards in uh, two games, and you see some of these highlights. He's juking everybody out of sight. So that's going to be a fun one on Thursday. Your Shore Sports Network top-ranked team in Allopin back in action on Thursday night against Freehold. There should be some points scored in this one. You think so, right? Yeah. I mean, Manalpin's defense has been excellent all season. Only had 13 points in three games, and those 13 points came all last week in a 34-13 victory over Oldbridge. Freehold, as we know, has been putting up points in bunches. Uh, they had to forfeit that week one game for use of ineligible players, so that skews their total stats a little bit. But in any event, this has been a team that has put up 35 points at least in their three games, a 42-0 shutout of Neptune, and quarterback Ashanti Worthy. What more can you say about it? The stats are they are almost unbelievable. Uh, I shouldn't say almost unbelievable. They are unbelievable. <laughs> Around 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns in three games this season. It's an offense unlike any other you're going to see, so it's a challenge for every team that faces the Colonials. You know, Manalpin is a top-ranked team in the shore for a reason. Still, a lot of their hands fall worthy, but Manalpin, you just love their bounce, what they can do on the ground, in the air, and on the defensive side of the ball, and in special teams where they had a kickoff return for a touchdown. So that's a tall order for Freehold, but it should be a good one. Clearly the most complete game, most complete team in the shore conference, the Braves are. A game I'm just going to mention quickly because we're broadcasting it on the Shore Sports Network, and that is 0-3 Toms River North against 3-0 in fifth-ranked Howell. These teams met twice last year. A lot of points scored, most of them by the Mariners. It would appear on paper it's payback time for the Rebels. Yeah, times have really changed in this matchup, and these are two programs that have been playing each other in the regular season for quite a while now. They used to be in the, divi uh, in the same division back when you had the Shore Conference American Division. Obviously, non-divisional teams right now, but right, I don't think we expected Tom's North to be 0 and 3 at this point. I know we we figured the Mariners were going to take a little bit of a step back just because of what they graduated last year. I think we all expected Howell to be one of the better teams in the shore, which they have been so far. Now you look at a Mariners team that's 0 and 3 coming in against a 3 and 0 Rebels team on the Rebels home field, and you know that's going to be a tough game, obviously for Tom's North. You're 0 and 3 now. If you go 0 and 4, you're looking at a season where. Just to make the playoffs is going to be a really uphill battle. Howell's a fun team to watch. They get it done on the offensive side. They're opportunistic on defense, as you said. They're looking for payback in a big way. That game will be broadcast on 11:60 and 13:10 a.m. and SureSportsNetwork.com. Kickoff is at 6:30. We move to Friday night. The other top 10 matchup. You have number nine Brick traveling to number two St. John Vianney, both three and zero. They played last year in the quagmire at Brick. That the Lancers came here with a win, and while they're both undefeated, Vianney certainly on paper appears to be the stronger team. Definitely, you know St. John Vianney. 31-7 uh, win over Red Bank last week. That was a game that was 7-7 at the half, though. So, you know, the Bucks certainly made the Lancers do work there. Brick, meanwhile, moved to 3-0 with a 20-0 win over Tom's River North. And you're right, Brick is a 
you know, Brick's a team that's going to make you earn it, really, especially on the defensive side of the ball. They do enough on offense with Jimmy Leblo at quarterback and Cole Brochelle making a lot of the plays in the passing game. St. Javier just has a ton of weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Their senior quarterback, Hazy Daniels, has had a tremendous season so far, both throwing the ball and running the ball. Johnny Buchanan is a battering ram at running back, and you know he gets about 12 tackles a game at linebacker. One of the better defensive players in the shore. And it's not just those guys. You know, Sam East, Zaire Sterling on the outside, really making plays. So that's a big, big offensive, offensive line. line. Exactly. Huge like, offensive line. Very big. So you talk yeah. about a team that um, you know can really wear on you as the game goes on. And they're on the turf there. So no matter whether it's supposed to be good, <laughs> but no matter what happens, you, you got to like the edge to the Lancers just because. You know, right now this season, you know, they've looked really good. And they've won 32 straight games against short conference teams. Another undefeated matchup in two teams in your top 10. Number 10, Monmouth Regional, 4-0, which sounds strange. Traveling to number 8, Point Pleasant Borough, the Panthers are 3-0. And this is an interesting game and a game that I'll be at on Friday night. Uh, Monmouth, our Jersey Mike's team of the week uh, for week three, coming off their 14-13 win over Matawan. There's some interesting stats for the Falcons. 4-0 for the first time since 2006. They've only made two playoff appearances in their history, 2006 and then in 2010 when they were 5-5. Five and five. So this is really uncharted territory as far as, you know, the way this season is going. Now you have a Point Borough team that is 3-0, has a really good, uh, you know, one of the best teams, you know, the best team in Ocean County if you go by the way we're ranking it, uh, and the biggest test for Monmouth Regional so far. So this should be a fun one. It's a non-divisional game, two teams that are off to great starts, one team that we expected, another team that we no one expected no. was on anyone's radar, so this should be fun because Monmouth, you can tell, they are kind of playing with nothing to lose. They're 4 0, but they're not feeling pressure here. Uh, and Point Burrow's a veteran team that's been getting it done, so we'll see how that one goes out. Panthers have been without their top running back, Tanner Gordon, the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks with a calf injury. Last week he was in uniform, very close to playing, so maybe he gets back in action this weekend. If it's as minor injury as we've been, you know, led to believe, got to imagine Gordon's back this week. He's a key component to what Point Burrow does in its ground game. You know, certainly Nathan Chiarello's done a good job filling in so far. He's made it so they have to honor that, but that breakaway ability that Gordon has where yeah. he cuts through that first level and it's a 50-plus yard touchdown, you know, that you see how good Point Burrow's offense has been already. Right. He added him to that mix and, and it reaches another level. And one quick one for a Saturday afternoon a game in Manasquan, a non-division game, the Big Blue hosting undefeated Barnegat. Interesting, an Ocean versus Monmouth County team, and, you know, I think Barnegat has surprised some people with the 3-0 start. Certainly, you know, Barnegat 3-0 coming off that 28-20 win over Manchester. Their tight end, Sean Morris, has been unbelievable, one of the best players in the short conference so far this season. Another big game uh, against the Hawks, five catches, 155 yards, and two touchdowns, and he's really been <laughs> really good on the defensive yeah. side of the ball as a defensive end. So Barnegat flying high, again, it's a non-divisional game, so you can kind of go in there with, you know, not nothing to lose, because every game is important, but uh, not a factor as far as a division race. Manusquan, as we mentioned, coming off the 10-7 loss to Middletown South. The Warriors 1-2, and two, so you know they're going to try to get one back, certainly in front of the home faithful there in Manusquan on Saturday, which is always one of the best atmospheres. If you've never been to a Saturday game at Manusquan, go. It's a fun time. It's a throwback. It is. Absolutely. No, no lights. It's all afternoon, and the neighborhood all comes. Absolutely. It's a uh, fun one. He's Bob Batters, the managing editor for the ShoreSportsNetwork.com uh, website, and, of course, our journal as well, our top guy here. We pick games each weekend. It's the Atlantic Physical Therapy Football Picks, and then we talk about some of the best ones. So check it out. Another good football weekend. Weekend number four. We're approaching the halfway mark of the regular season. We'll see you next weekend on the Shore Sports Network.